before it's too late. Madagascar's isolation continued until around the birth of Christ, at which time humanity discovered this, the world's fourth largest island. And up until now, Madagascar's human population grew slowly. Not so slowly, the wildlife population shrank. At least 15 species of lemurs have become extinct. That's one third of all known species, with another 36 species of lemurs teetering on the edge of extinction, including the critically endangered and incredibly shy golden bamboo lemur, the greater bamboo lemur, or the endangered black and white rough lemur. The Milne Edward Sifica, and the biggest lemur of them all, the Indri or the mysterious eye eye. There's the comical ring-tailed lemur and the famous dancing Vero Sifica. As well as having the world's most endangered species, Madagascar is also one of the world's poorest nations. For many Malagasy people, it's slash and burn. To produce charcoal for cooking. To grow rice to feed their families. Or to create pasture for their cattle. As it is, only 20% of primary rainforest remains. It could be said then that if they continue this way of life, life this way will cease to exist for them. It could be said that these people's welfare then is as endangered as Madagascar's wildlife. Therefore, it could be argued their plight and future or lack of it, is inexorably interwoven with the plight and future, or lack of it, of the wildlife. For the people to survive, so must their wildlife. For their wildlife to survive, so must the people. These are the reasons why the United Nations and organizations like the IUCN, WWF, CARE and the Wildlife Conservation Society, to name a few, are involved in helping to save these endangered species before it's too late. All of these organizations are involved one way or another with projects throughout Madagascar. One of the main projects is in the north of Madagascar, at a place which ironically had one of the first contacts with humanity, on an island called Nosimangabe, in the Bay on Tujil. Madagascar is one of the most important countries for conservation worldwide because it has such a high level of endemic species, that's to say species that are only found in Madagascar. Matthew Hatchwell works for the Wildlife Conservation Society, which runs the Bronx Zoo in New York. He and his family have been in Madagascar since 1995. Originally from England, today he is conservation technical advisor for the Maswala National Park, of which this island, Nosimangabe, is part of. We're going through the whole process of setting up a new uh, protected area, which especially in a context like Madagascar, is, you know, you're starting from scratch. 
The park and the island is managed jointly by him and ANGAP, the Madagascar National Parks Authority. The island is a unique microcosm in itself. Here, there are many endangered and common species alike. What we do know from the botanical surveys is that the vegetation of the island here is extremely rich. For an island this size, there are certain families, for example, the ebony species. For its size, Nosimanga Bay has a much greater diversity than a comparable area on the mainland of Madagascar. And this incredible microcosm of biodiversity attracts many visitors to the island. And many of the tourists come specifically to Nosimanga Bay to trek through pitch black jungle, risking roots and mosquitoes and other unseen creatures of the night to find one of Madagascar's most fascinating creatures, the Iowa.